Uh, all right, so hello everybody. Welcome to uh, lecture 22 of PH 870. Um, Utsav, can you um, close that door and leave a little gap? Not all the way, huh? Thanks. So what we were talking about in uh, the previous class was, um, well, we talked about how we can correct for phase and bit flip errors, right? And so the general procedure that we came up with is that bit flip errors correspond to, uh, so what, what we want is we want to first, how do we detect these errors? We detect them using syndrome measurements, right? So syndrome measurements correspond to projectors onto the, uh, onto the error subspace. And uh, so, so we measure the, the syndrome operators. And if we find that those syndrome operators are depending on those values, uh, we can perform the error correction. Now, the thing that was missing in yesterday's discussion was a description of how, how precisely do you measure these syndrome operators, right? In, in terms of a, uh, a quantum circuit language, right? So that, because we want to have uh, the precise circuit implementation of this of this uh, error correcting code, right? So that is what that is part of what I'll talk about today. Um, so let me uh, so right, and so what we also found was that uh, these syndrome measurements can be uh, also alternatively be expressed in terms of the action of these operators, Z1, Z2, Z2, Z3, which allow us to compare uh, individual qubits, right? And so what, what this is, this is a parity check. This is a parity check, right? Parity means if, if a bit, one bit is the same as the other bit, you get um, plus one, otherwise you get minus one. So the question is, how do you perform uh, a parity check on, on two qubits, okay? Now, for this purpose, one can use a C0 gate. So what is a parity, first of all? What is the definition of parity? Parity of uh, two Boolean variables. I don't know if that's, is that, is that visible? What I'm writing? Parity of two Boolean variables uh, can be, is the XOR, logical XOR. Okay. So for example, if they are both A, B, right? Both of them are zero. Parity of A, B is zero. And if both of them are one, parity of AB, X or B is zero, right? For zero, one, you get one, one, zero, you get one, right? So if both of them are the same, then the parity, this X or gives you zero. Otherwise, it gives you one, right? And we can implement this in a circuit using a C0 gate, right? Because what is the operation of a C0? If you have a state A and a state B, then what does this C0 do? Here it gives you the output is the state A, X or B, right? So this is, what is this doing? This is giving you the parity of AB. And you can measure this parity, right? Or you can use it in the circuit to determine whether A and B are the same or they're different, right? And depending on the, whatever the outcome is, you can perform your recovery, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to do this for three qubits, okay? 
so how do we what is the circuit uh, for doing that so we need uh, these are the three qubits let's say a b c okay and uh, we want to do this parity check uh, between qubits 1 and 2 and between qubits 2 and 3 okay so what we need first of all is we need ancilla qubits for this purpose okay so these are ancilla ancilla qubits okay so the first step is to perform a c not between qubit a and qubit this qubit 0 okay so here what you will get is a xor 0 right now for any boolean variable uh, what is a xor 0 if a is equal to 0 you get 0 if a is equal to 1 you get 1 so a x or 0 is a right so this just gives you the state a over here okay uh, then you uh, do an x or between b and the this ancilla qubit right so after this first x or operation the first ancilla qubit contains a right so if you perform this second xor operation now between the second qubit and the first ancilla qubit right what will you get over here you will get a xor b right because that's what the c not does right c not is taking this a and b and giving you a xor b so this c not is acting on this qubit and this qubit these two qubits right so it will give you ax or b over here zoom people is this fine are you able to follow yes sir so now we can uh, do exactly the same thing uh, with the second and third qubit right and we will store that parity in the second ancilla right so what do we do now we, we take the second qubit and we perform a c not between the second qubit and the second ancilla what do you end up with here you end up with b x or 0 which is b right then you take the third qubit right and you perform an x or with the third qubit and the second ancilla right what do you get you get b x or c right so the first ancilla now it contains the state a x or b uh and what can you say about about these qubits well the original data registers are unchanged right so you have stored the parity in these ancilla qubits right now if the parity so depending on the value of these two variables we can uh, apply the appropriate recovery right so for instance if a if a x or b uh, is equal to 0 right that means a and b are the same and b x or c is equal to 1 which means that b and c are different so this means the c qubit has flipped right and so then what would we do we would apply what would be the correction how we corrected we would apply this gate identity identity x right because x gate would flip the third qubit back to its original state right so you would need <coughs> to get the complete information you would need one more a uh, set of uh, parity checks uh well 
Mm, no, I think I think this is enough because um, right. So so these are the three possibilities. If a x or b is one, and b x or c is zero, this means that a has flipped. Okay. Again, assuming that you only have one single qubit errors, and if both a and b, a x or b and b x or c are one. This means that B has flipped. So these two parities checks are sufficient to give you information about all three qubits. I hope that that you can convince yourself that this is this is indeed the case, right? So this would mean that let's say A is one and B is zero, but then B is one and C is zero, right? So now, assuming again single qubit errors, this means that it is B which was flipped. Okay, right. Now, what we want to do is, depending on the value of the parities, we want to apply the recovery procedure. Right. So the recovery procedure is conditioned on the values of these parity. Uh, on these parity qubits right so in a so now if a let's say b x or c is 0 right and a x or b is 1 then so b x or c is 0 and a x or b is 1 that means a has flipped so we want to apply the x operation on a right so now I'll begin the circuit. I'll continue this circuit. I'll begin the circuit from this point onwards that I have these. Uh, where I have stored the. The parity information in the ancillary qubits. Okay. So if a x or b is zero and B X or C is one, then I want to apply this X operation on the third qubit, right? What does, how can I do this? This is a controlled operation. So I use B X or C as a control, right? And I put an X over here, right? Like this, okay? No, I well, no, no, I'm talking about the first case. A X or B is zero. B X or C is one. The second case is that A X or B is one. B X or C is zero. So A is flipped, right? So what? What? How do you implement that? You put a controlled X operation on the A qubit. Try to make that a little bit neater. Okay. And what about the B1? The B1 is dependent on both the parities, right? So both the parities, parity qubits will control this, this X operation on the B, right? So you remember there was a CC not gate, right? It's the, it's the same thing. You have two controls now. And you have an X operation here. Okay. So this is this circuit, right? This is your recovery procedure. This is your syndrome, your syndrome measurement or syndrome detection. Sorry? So won't we have to apply all the C C X gate so for the on that all on A B C since uh it's one then no 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 just look at these conditions again. Right? This is the first condition. C C qubit is flipped. So I, I don't understand. So this covers all three cases, no? Yeah, but uh, 
Which one? No, 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 no. We are assuming single qubit errors. So only one qubit at most can be flipped. Yeah, somebody else can explain what you what he's trying to. Suppose qubit B has Mm -hmm. So, in that case, A, X, R, B, and B, X, R, C both are one. So, all the elements of the table that may have to figure uh, that uh, A and C to J. Like, if we have only. And how? I don't, I don't see how that's happening. Like, sir, if, sir, if, if, we consider if. B qubit has. I mean, uh -huh. So B qubit has flipped, then both the parities will be what? So sir, A X R B and B X R C are, are both one? one. So only when both are one. But no, they are not. They are only affecting the B qubit, na? This, these, these two controls over here, they are only affecting the B qubit. But, huh? sir, but, there but they are, are individually one also. One second, one at a time. But they are individually one also. Na? So they, that individual gates, that single X control, controlled X gates, they will also be activated. Which ones? The, the previous one, the one before that. Ah, one. ah I, see, I, see, I, see, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay, good point. Fair point. Your point is the following. Let me. Uh, clarify it for the Zoom viewers, is that if you have this case, both of these are one. In that event, one will, you will, you will get this operation. But this, these two operations will also be activated, right? So here's the resolution for that. The resolution is as follows. So this is a good point. The resolution is that here I just said that you uh, apply the controlled X, right? But in fact, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put a, a, a measurement. You're supposed to measure these, these parities first, okay? So let me write down this circuit with, with measurement. Okay, so at this point, what happens is that one performs a measurement on both of these parities. Okay, and then you perform a control. Uh, so once you measure it becomes a classical bit. And when it's a classical bit, you would have draw it with two lines. And now, if we, now we put the control, this thing X operation, Right? Okay. This is X and then uh, X. Which one second? One second. Uh, yeah, you're right. That will be the same. So, like, can we have one more set of things? So that
um no it turns out that you don't need that this is sufficient and i we can uh, so so i'll i'll do something i'll show the circuit in quark fine we'll we'll look at the circuit in quark and then uh you will see Yeah, one one second, one second. Let me do one thing at a time. But last bit, we are just using it as a trigger mark always. But anything you have to do, like the phone, 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 the
B and C. Okay. And now we we put a measurement on the ancilla bits. Okay. And now we perform the error correction, the conditional error correction. So the conditional error correction is as follows. Uh, where is X? X is the strip, right? Okay. This is the one when both the parities are one, right? Uh, then when the second parity is uh, one, we flip A and when the third parity is, second parity is one, we flip C. Okay, now uh, this should give you the same state uh, after, after doing this, you should get ABC, right? Now you see one thing, this is zero, 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 right? The input state is zero, zero, zero. What is the output state we are getting here? Zero, 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 right? Let me remove one of these, let's say, right? Now the output state is not the same, right? Okay. Let me remove this guy, let's say. This doesn't affect anything. Uh, well, these two, removing these two will not affect anything because, so let me put another error on the Y, right? So that way it will become, Let me put y of t over here. And this will not do anything. Z of t will not be an error. Remember that Z of t will just give me a phase. Right? Now, you see, I have, and in fact, you know, I can um, okay, change it to something else so that it doesn't, no, not. Again, um, Okay, yeah, this is fine. So, one, two, three. Okay. Is it? But this doesn't work on Marisa. Ha, it doesn't work on Marisa. You're right. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks for pointing that. So, yeah, let, let's do it one at a time. Right? It's working on this error. It works here. Um, it works with this guy and but now it doesn't work. I, I think that, uh, yeah. Um, so let me just, put another, yeah, okay. So I think you have a point there, what's up? Thank you for pointing this out. It's working on both of these bits, but the moment I put it here. So maybe the order needs to be the same. Which order? The order of the bits that you have to count. So like first the bit from last initial to the C, then from second, second last initial to the C, and then the double bit. I don't believe it matters, but let's try it, okay? No. So let's let's try to think of a of a of a solution for this. Huh?
Say that again. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So you're saying you put an A here, X here, and then X here, right? This is what you're saying, right? That's right. Brilliant. That's actually quite brilliant. I didn't think of it. I don't know if anybody else thought of it. But he's right. If you put a double controlled XXX gate here, then all three of the qubits are correct. As you can see, right? All three of the qubits are correct. Excellent. And you have found an error in a textbook also in this process. Uh, so I will uh, email the author and uh, CC that to you. So anyways, this is an example of correcting a single bit flip error. Right now, here's something very interesting. I have placed these measurement uh, operators here, right? Now I'm going to do something funny, okay? I'm going to put my recovery sub, sub circuit before the measurement, right? Is it still working? It's still doing exactly what I expected to do. Right? This is a very important principle. This is called the, uh, the principle of uh, deferred measurement. Okay. So uh, one way of stating it is uh, that Measurements can always be moved from an intermediate stage of a quantum circuit to the end of a circuit. So in this example, right, we had an intermediate stage where we put a measurement and then we put some control bits. I can always take that measurement and move it to the end, past my, past the rest of the circuit, okay? So, in other words, I can take my uh, classically controlled operations and replace them with the quantum version. So now you see, this is a C naught gate, this is a C naught gate, this is a CCXXX gate, not a classically controlled gate. These, these are quantum gates. Now. So this this will this idea might take a little bit getting used to, but this is a very powerful idea as you can imagine, right? Because in all sorts of algorithms. This is just an example, right? This is a building block for measuring parity and so on. But you can imagine that if you have a bigger circuit, like a nine qubit circuit or something like that, you will have lots of measurements, right? Because you have nine qubits. If you want to construct a circuit like this. So one can take all of those measurements and put them at the end. So first you construct your circuit with the measurement and then the control, classically controlled gates. Once you are happy that it works, you just take the measurements and put them at the very end. It's weird. I know it's weird, but it works, right? As you can see. And but now, uh, is it working for arbitrary uh, this thing? One second. Let's see if it works for. Um, Or arbitrary values of of these bits, uh, right? So it will only work if your input state is zero 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 or one one one, right? Because if you put in a state that is zero one zero, which I had just now, that state already has an has an error, right? So if I put one 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 one. Right, then I see I get one one one. Oh no, 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 the error correction part, right, right, right. So sorry. 
to see the error correction part you have to change one of these bits my mistake so let me put in 010 010 should be corrected to what 000 110 should be corrected to what 111 right we are getting 111 here right yes or no yes and then of course if this is 111 there is no error then we can try making this 0 110 it's been corrected to 111 what if we make this 100 it's been corrected to 000 right so this is this is our state which has a single uh, bit flip right the first four gates are doing the uh, parity check this is a syndrome measurement and then the last set of uh, three components is uh performing our recovery right and once you have this in quirk by the way quirk has a very nice nice aspect that the the url itself right if you look at this url it contains all the information about the circuit it contains the full circuit so if i just bookmark this url okay if i just bookmark this url and then i can give it a name right quirk um c qubit single bit flip error correction code right and i just save it in my uh whatever i can call it quantum circuits let's say or quirk quantum circuits sorry new folder quirk quantum circuits then it is saved and whenever i want to look at this thing again what do i do i go to my uh, my bookmarks and uh, well i look at my four quantum circuits and i will get this up. right okay any question from the zoom people zoom people any question no okay then i will continue i'll move on to the to the next part and uh, okay great excellent right so we have talked about two things so far we've talked about uh, how to correct the bit flip code and how to how to use this principle of deferred measurement okay um now there are there are some more very useful uh, circuit identities which are important to know the first is that how can one perform a measurement of an operator without destroying the state right so as an example so what we want to do is we want to measure operators which act the action of some operator on a state right without destroying the state so maybe i'll i'll call it um non destructive operator measurement right so now here's a circuit for that as an example i have some ancilla qubit actually i'll put my ancilla so this is my state psi in i have some unitary operator u 
I want to ask, what is the result of you acting on site? I want to measure. I want to measure this. This state, okay? But I want to do it. Is it possible to do it in a way that does not cause this original state to collapse? Right? And the answer is that it is possible. Again, we use an ancilla. This ancilla is what will it will store our result. Okay. And here it's important to keep in mind that you cannot do this for an arbitrary operator. Okay. You must be uh, Hermitian and unitary, and it must have eigenvalues plus or minus one only. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that this cannot be done for arbitrary operators. Maybe it can be done, uh, but this method works only for this set of operators. But this is enough for most many purposes because remember, uh, when you want to uh, act with this Z operator, right, on some state, Z is one of those operators, X is one of the operators, if it's acting on the, uh, in the, in the Bell basis or the Hadamard basis, right? So you have, um, so the first thing we do is we, we put the ancilla into the uh, Bell basis. And then we perform a controlled unitary, right? So this is a controlled unitary. The control qubit is the ancilla, right? And the unitary is acts on the state side. Okay. And then we again put a Hardamard here. And then we, we measure this. Okay. And then here I will get psi out, right? Where psi out is going to be, oops, sorry, I should say that. Yeah, where psi out is going to be um, the, uh, the state that I get as a result of this action of u on, on psi, right? So in particular, if you're talking about uh, something like Z acting on, on, on some state, right? Zero or Z acting on one. These are eigenstates of Z, right? So in this case, Psi out will be equal to Psi in. Our original state will not be changed. And at the same time, the measurement output here will give me the relevant eigenvalue. Okay, so let's let's uh, see how this works. So the Hardamard takes the zero and converts it into zero plus one, right? So what is your original state? Original state is psi in zero. After the first Hardamard, your state becomes Right? Psi in tensor, the zero plus one superposition. Right? And now the unitary operator acts on psi at this point, but it's controlled. So, so let me write this. Let me expand this out. This is psi in tensor zero plus psi in tensor one by root two, right? And now there's a control unitary. So the control unitary does what? Control unitary means nothing happens to this component, right? Because the control is zero. And this component gets acted upon by the given operator. So after this, 
this is the controlled unitary operation. You end up with the state psi in zero plus u acting on psi in tensor. And I hope you all can see why doing all this on a blackboard would be very not very elegant. Maybe. You end up with this state, okay? Where u acts only on psi in. And then we perform another Hadamard, right? So then we perform another another Hadamard on our uh, ancilla qubit. What will that do? That will take our zero to uh, zero plus one and the one to zero minus one, right? So we get one by two psi in tensor zero plus one plus u times psi in zero minus one. Okay. And Let's see what this is. This is one half. Now, if I fact, if I factor out the terms and I collect the terms, um, I get psi in plus u psi in tensor zero and psi in minus u psi in. Uh, tensor one. Okay. And now what have we said here? We have said that um, this state psi n is an eigenvector of u. Right? So that means u psi n is equal to lambda psi n, right? Where lambda is equal to plus or minus one. Right? This is the restriction we have put on this operator u. So then what happens to this? This is our psi, this is our final state. Let me just call it psi f. So what is the final state? If lambda is equal to plus one, right? What will happen? This term will vanish. The second term in this expression is psi n minus u psi n. This term will vanish because it will just be psi n minus psi n. And I will be left with this psi n, uh, sorry, right. Uh, that, and that is very important. That's why the factor of one half has to be kept. I'll be left with two times psi n, answer zero. The two cancels out. If lambda is equal to minus one, the same thing will happen. I'll be left with the same state. Uh, because if lambda is equal to minus one, the first term will be zero. This term will be equal to two times psi n, tensor one. And again, the factor of two will cancel out. Right? And now I perform a measurement of my ancilla qubit, right? So if my measurement gives me zero, right? So you measure your ancilla. So this tells me that my lambda is equal to one. And this tells me my lambda is equal to minus one. Right? So I have managed to non-destructively measure my state. The final state that I'm left with is, uh, is psi in, right? And the measurement, value of the measurement tells me whether the eigenvalue of u acting on this state was plus one or minus one, right? So the measurement 
If it's zero, that tells me lambda is equal to plus one. If it's one, tells me lambda is equal to minus one. And my original state is unchanged. It's unaffected by this procedure. Right? This is really nice, isn't it? I mean, like, you just like think about it, like it's completely not something that intuitive, right? Intuition kind of fails here, no? Right? Yeah, but but that is enough for many purposes, no? Because like I said, if you want to measure uh, the syndrome for bit flip errors, the syndrome is what? It's multiples of the poly Z, which is this, which falls in this category, right? Then uh, in the Hadamard basis, if you want to measure, again, you want to measure the poly, poly Z, but in the Hadamard basis, the same thing for the face flip. So you would put a couple of extra Hadamard uh, operators in front of the state to put it in the Hadamard, Hadamard basis, like one H over here, then you, then another H to bring you back, right? So, um, so this is, this is neat, right? Okay. Um, Now, why why uh, do we do we care about this? Uh, because, as I said, this allows us to uh, measure the these operators, uh, these these syndromes, right? So all the possible syndromes can be expressed. as linear combinations of such unitary operators. Actually, more precisely, the correct statement is that all of the errors that can act, right, can be written as linear combinations of these, um, of these polys, okay. Now, So let me see second, second, yeah. And now we, there is another very useful identity which comes from this only. So here in this picture, what is happening is I am applying this, these harder mods to my Ancilla qubit. Okay. Now this is the, this is the following identity, which is this. So I have psi in my ancilla. I apply the Hadamard to the ancilla. Oops. Then I perform a control U, right? Then again, a Hadamard on the ancilla. And I'm left with psi in and lambda. Uh, which is my eigenvalue, right? As a measurement. Now the identity is the following. Um, that um, if U is the X, X gate, okay? So if U happens to be X, okay, I want to measure the, um, so let me put X over here. In that case, this circuit can be alternatively written in a different way. I act on my, my input state now with the harder mod. And then I act on it again with the harder mod. And what I have here is I have a control, a C naught acting on my ancilla. And once again, I perform a measurement. And here it's sine. Okay. So the measurement is not 
not important because it doesn't affect whether the identity is true or not. This is an example of, of what? Face kickback. Right? Face kickback is the um, operation where you can have a control and a target and the target can change the state of the control. Well, I'm not sure if this is, it looks similar to that, but it might not be exactly face kickback. So this identity holds for the case when u is equal to x. And I will leave this for you as a, as a homework, okay? Which will be part of your homework assignment. Show this for homework number two. Okay. Uh, one has a similar identity for the Z operator. If you want to measure the Z operator like this, which is the following. Again, you have harder mod, control, harder mod. You have over here, right? You get psi in and you measure the eigenvalue of, of uh, Z over here. So the statement is the following, that we can replace this um, with the, a single C naught. Psi in, zero, psi in, and then this will be the eigenvalue of Z. So, what is the statement? The statement is that if you want to measure the eigenvalue of Z, action of Z on a state, you take the state, put it into the Hardmart basis, right? What, what will this do? This will take all your zeros and ones and convert them into pluses and minuses. And then you measure, you perform the C0 operation. Now from the second identity, what you can see is that this C0 operation, what does it do? It measures the eigenvalue of the Z operator. So you're measuring the eigenvalue of the Z operator in the Hardamart basis, right? Which is what? Which is the measurement of X. In the Hardamart basis, what happens to the X operator? It becomes the Z operator, right? It becomes diagonal. The plus and minus states are eigenvalue, eigenstates of the X operator. No? So maybe like you are all reaching saturation now. So this is, I would call this the first identity that you should prove. And then this will follow, the second identity will follow as a consequence. Let me, let me just So let's just look at the second identity really quickly. Let's say psi in um, is equal to this state lambda, where lambda is equal to zero or one, right? Then I act with the C naught operation on the ancillary qubit. If lambda is equal to zero, what happens to the ancillary qubit? Nothing happens to the ancillary qubit, right? And when I measure it, I find lambda is equal to zero, right? If lambda is equal to one, then my ancillary qubit is flipped. When I perform a measurement, it tells me that lambda is equal to one. So this circuit is doing exactly what is advertised, which is it is measuring the effect of the Z operator. It is measuring the eigenvalue of the Z operator on my state, right? 
and since we have already seen that this is the general form of a, the circuit when you want to measure this kind of a unitary operator right and what is this circuit doing it is measuring the z operator so that means this circuit has to correspond to the circuit with u given by z right so that is proved okay and now let's say you want to measure the uh, this thing this x operator right so to measure the x operator what do you do you take your your state psi put it in the hadamard basis then you measure the z operator on your state when it's in the hadamard basis now how do you measure the z operator you measure it by this c not gate as we have just shown right putting this c not gate measures this input state over here the action of the z operator on this state and then we put another hadamard to get go back to our original state so these this operation together what will it do it will measure the x action of x on the state so therefore this has to be equal to the circuit on the left hand side right so this is not a this is not a mathematical proof i mean well you can but it's not in mathematical language that i leave for you for the homework right to work it out step by step that this is indeed the case okay um so uh, let's see okay uh, zoom people can i take uh, and all of you can i take some more time do you guys have to go anywhere can i take another 15 minutes is that okay with all of you on zoom please say something yes sir you can assume i'll assume that in the absence of any uh, statement from you that it's okay so what i want to do is i want to talk about the phase flip code also okay so we have already talked about the bit flip code and i hope that i have convinced you with the uh, correction uh, very nicely provided by utsav and the rest of you that this should be a ccxxx gate right this gives us our correction for the bit flip for a single bit flip now we want to do a correction we want to do it for the phase flip right so what is phase flip so we have done the correction for a so phase flip recovery and diagnosis recovery and uh, sorry diagnosis and recovery circuit uh diagnosis and recovery circuit right now before i sh show you the circuit i will ask you to make a very simple guess can we modify this circuit in some way that you will in a in a simple way that will give us the phase flip instead of the bit flip check add add mods right that's the most obvious thing one can do is just take these states right and act on them with with hadamards and that's exactly uh what one has to do so you have a b and c right and now you want to check for the phase flip so the phase flip means that if a if the state a for instance is of the form 0 plus beta 1 right a phase flip error means that you go to zero uh, alpha zero minus beta one so first of all we just put all of these in the hadamard basis and then we uh 
perform our parity check as before uh, with one C naught over here, one C naught over here. And by the way, uh, this operation with, uh, with multiple, uh, where you have one C naught followed by another C naught, uh, it can be abbreviated and uh, written as, uh, rather than putting two C naughts in a row, um, one second, no, no, uh, no, not this circuit, that's a different circuit, so I won't do that. Yeah, yeah, this, okay. So this is the parity check for the first qubit, first two qubits, and then we perform the same operation with the second and third qubit. Okay. So uh, this is this performs our our parity check, right? In the Hardamard basis. But now, what we want to do is we want to uh, apply again Hardamard after this, so that we can come back to the normal basis, right? Because our states have been modified. We want to convert them back. Right, and then after this, the correction procedure proceeds as in the same way, right? So here the correction procedure involved what? Here the correction procedure involved the X gate. Why the X gate? Because the X gate is what flips your qubit. Which gate flips your face? Z, Z. Yeah. right? So if you have the Z gate acting on, on a state, alpha zero plus or minus beta one, this will give you alpha zero minus plus beta one. This will give you a phase flip. So depending on the, on the value of your uh, parities, once again, you take your, your parity as your control, right? And then uh, you go ahead and perform your phase flip on these states, okay? So in exactly the same procedure that we had earlier, okay? And then uh, this one is the double controlled and then it will be ZZZ. Once again, to take into account the correction uh, that we discussed. This is your phase flip recovery. Okay. We can check that this works out in Quirk. Let's see. Uh, here the screen. Is it not showing? Uh, is it showing on your on your? Okay, it's showing in Zoom, right? Okay, good. That's all I need. So I just need to modify this circuit for phase flip. So I put three Hardamards here, right? And then uh, I put three harder mods here, right? And then instead of X, what do I do? I put, I put Z. Like this. Okay, now uh, let's check for a phase flip error. For that, what should I do? I should take my, uh, my state, right? One, 
and uh, so I have zero zero zero, right? Now I want the phase to change. So where is the phase gate? Let me put an error. Okay, yeah, that's right. We can do that. Let's take two pluses. And one minus, right? And what is the output? Output you can see is, is three pluses, right? What if I take two minuses and three pluses? I get three minus, right? It's working, right? Once again, I save it in my bookmark folder. I call it uh, the face flip uh, error correction. Three qubit face flip error correction. Right? So I think I'll stop here. I think this is enough for one day. Um, Zoom people, are you, are you, are you is this clear to you what's going on here? If there is any doubt, please ask me. Um, uh, Shweta, are you, are you following what's going on? Uh, Aditya, you have any, any doubts? Please ask me. I, that's a great, that's a great question, right? This is a great question because the principle of deferred measurement says that if it's correct, you should be able to move even one of the measurements. I should be able to move it here, right? So I'm moving it between the, just as you said, right? So, or I could put it here. Now the first, so here, in this case, what I'm doing now is I'm performing the measurement and then turning all my parity check qubits into class qubits, right? Let me just uh, make this plus minus minus, this gets converted into minus minus minus. It's working. According to the principle of deferred measurement, I should be able to take the measurement on individual qubits and translate that. There should be no restriction, right? So again, this is a very good point. Right, I should be able to take the single measurement and I should be able to put it not just at the end, but I should be able to put it anywhere in between also. Right, so I, I take this one measurement and I put it in between. My code is still working, right? I take this second measurement and put it here. My code is still working, right? So I have minus plus plus, minus plus minus gets converted to minus minus minus. So this is the, uh, so the principle of deferred measurement is also a, it's, it's a linear statement. That means you can apply it to different subsystems individually, right? It obeys linearity. If it didn't obey linearity, we would be in trouble. Any other doubts? I don't know if this clears. No. No. Because if you move it to the beginning, then your C naughts will not have any effect. No? These are C naught gates. No? C naught gates are quantum operators. If you move your measurement to the beginning, then you will collapse your uh, these these, these uh, ancilla state ancilla qubits. They'll become class field qubits. Uh, let's let's see uh, what happens. Does it have? Does it work? It doesn't work. Well, it says no remix. The reason it says no remix is because this is a classical uh, bit now. Right, and so it won't allow us to do this, 
operation. Uh, so what if I if I uh, put this measurement here? Does that work? Uh, it works. But again, the reason it works is because I'm already done with the first qubit. Right, the first qubit parity check is already, uh, sorry, the first parity check is already done. Right? So I can always measure it here. So these are all kinds of very interesting and non-intuitive things that one can, one can do in quantum mechanics. And these are all a consequence of the linearity of quantum mechanics. Does this <laughs> clarify your doubt? I mean, do you have another do you have any other doubts? Please ask because this is really good, right? Anybody else? Yeah. No, so C naught obviously is not, you can't use a classical control. Right? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's a conditional. That's all. It's a conditional. There's a little device there. Huh? So there is no, there's going to be no, there's no entanglement or phase kickback or anything like that possible because the original bit is a classical bit. Okay. Zoom people, any 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 doubts? Any questions about this? Okay. All right. So I will. Uh, and any other overall doubts or questions? No. All right. Then I guess I will end it here today. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.